that the vegetation changes as you move from low elevation up the mountain sides. These vegetation zones are due to many variables, but especially to changes in temperature and precipitation as you go to higher elevation. Often the grasslands give way rather abruptly to forests on the foothills of the mountains. Sometimes the transition starts with short, rather scruffy trees like juniper, oak, and limber pine, or tall shrubs like mountain mahogany. The lower elevation forests on the east slope of the Rockies are usually dominated by widely spaced ponderosa pine. In the higher, cooler areas of western Wyoming, the mid slopes have mostly lodgepole pine or Douglas fir. We call these forests, especially their lower and middle zones, montane forests. As elevation increases, montane forests shift to subalpine types like spruce and fir, and eventually to alpine tundra. From the dry deserts, one can walk up an elevation into desert scrub. Walk higher and reach the foothills of the mountains. From here, montane forests of pines dominate. Higher up, a subalpine forest of primarily spruces and firs create the last treed vegetation type. Then, walk to the very top of a mountain or to the top of the globe, and you have the tundra. Tropical or subtropical evergreen montane moist forests are categorized by a persistence, frequent or seasonal low level cloud cover, usually at the canopy level. Cloud forests often exhibit an abundance of moss covering the ground and vegetation, in which the uh, cases they are also referred to as a mossy forest. Mossy forests usually develop on the saddles of mountains, where moisture introduced by settling clouds is more effectively retained. The moist rain montane forest consists of tropical montane forests and the cloud forest. The tropical montane forest is a forest that grows on mountains above an altitude of 2,300 feet. High mountane forest above 6,600 feet to 10,000 feet in elevation is often manifested as a cloud forest. Forest that receives the majority of its precipitation from mist or fog that passes up from the moist, humid lowlands. Trees of cloud forests are typically shorter than those of tropical montane forests, rainforests, resulting in a less developed canopy. Nevertheless, cloud forest trees are heavily burdened with epiphytes that hide the abundance of moisture from the passing rain. Tropical montane forests are especially found in Southern America and the Andes. The alpine tundra can be found at any latitude on Earth. The elevation at which it is found is strongly determined by its location on the globe. In Colorado, tree line is 11,500 feet. We traveled here to examine the alpine habitat in closer detail. The air is on average 30 degrees cooler than just at the bottom of the mountain, and the winds are high. But what does live here is specially adapted to this environment. The plants that live here form the basis of a relatively simple ecosystem. Most plants here are perennials. For example, this plant was here last year and will probably be here again next year too. The growing season is just too short and unpredictable for plants to start from a seedling, grow stems and leaves, and then produce flowers. Instead, one plant may take four or five years before it actually flowers. So heat up here is also limiting. Some plants have anthocyanins, pigments in the plant that make it red or blue. <clears throat> These pigments actually convert sunlight to heat. Look at other plants and you'll see tiny hairs on the surface. These hairs help trap the heat while also dissipating the harmful sunlight. Also, there are no tall plants here. Instead, they are low to the ground, like lichens and mosses, which helps protect them from the desiccating action of the wind. Do you ever wonder what pollinates these flowers? Well, it's not the bees, if that's what you're thinking. Well, instead, it's actually the more erratic and slightly less dependable flies. Bees just don't do so well up here. Large animals like mountain goats, bears, and elk can migrate here in the summer to feed. Only a few make this their home year-round. Ptarmigans are the only birds, and marmots and pikas are the most common year-round residents. The yellow-bellied marmot is the largest squirrel in North America. In the alpine tundra, you'll notice it scampering around for food among the rocks. They must watch out for birds of prey. They warn each other with high-pitched whistles. It has to stay busy, though, because they hibernate for eight months a year. A smaller resident is the pika. They look like rodents, but in reality, they're more closely related to rabbits. Like other animals of the tundra, they have reduced appendages. They have smaller ears, smaller legs, and shorter tails. 
all which help them reduce heat loss and survive in this harsh environment. So you've probably heard that the tundra here is a fragile environment. A disturbance here from humans could take up to 500 years to regrow to its original state. That means we have to be careful when we're here. Also, we rely on snowmelt from the tundra to water our agricultural fields and stabilize the flow of our rivers throughout the summer. It's also a great place to learn about the interactions of plants and animals because of the simplicity of the food web. Depot of Montane Forest. Now here we have a mon uh, coniferous montane tree in a montane forest. Uh, you can see a path. This path is that of a snail. This alone helps in maintaining the biodiversity of the region and plays an essential role in the sustainability of the environment. Now, the bark also helps uh, in the biodiversity of the region. It has peeling barks that help to regenerate the soil and protect excessive weathering of the soil. Now, as you can see, there are holes, such sort of holes in the roots. These holes act as an habitat to the small creatures like rodents and rabbits as a living habitat. The roots also helps in, uh, ho the, in holding the soil. Uh, they are extremely big trees so they, have extreme, they are extremely powerful in holding the soil and protect it from excessive weathering. Now yeah, as you can see there is a, sp uh, there is a sp uh, sort of moss covered. The moss are very important as they hold the moisture and uh, act as a habitat to small creatures. Uh, all these reasons made 2011 the year of international forest. Now having forest means having water and having water means having life on earth. Forest regulate the hydrological cycle, retains water in soil and helps to discharge the water tables and flow of the rivers. Forests hold up the soil and prevent it from erosion. The forest inhale the carbon dioxide and hence helps in sustaining the environment on earth. Now, for, for a mountain forest also acts in the form of mountain tourism. Mountain forests are also water reservoirs for the summer. They Forest pastures also plays an important role in the natural restoration of forests. The food is another important resource we obtain from forest. Timber is the most used forest produce and hence the most valuable. People are using misusing the forest for their personal deed. We need to save the forest and with the help of sustainable use of it. Only then we can ensure the sustainability of a forest. Forest survival is in your hands, ma'am.